for our spring meeting here for SALT, which is seniors and law enforcement together. Okay, and we got a we got a great a great uh, program for you today. I think you're going to enjoy it. I want to say one thing. We I'm going to kick it off with probably the most exciting news that you're going to find is that the um, Senior Concerns Commission is sponsoring a lunch after this meeting, and they have brought in some very, very good chili from one of our local establishments here in town that you're really going to enjoy. So chili and crackers, and uh, of course, you know, we've got the other things. Uh, Deputy Chief Mike Lay is here from the police department, and he has brought in a cake uh, with, uh, appropriately with some hearts on it. Because uh, I'm sure all the guys, none of the guys have forgotten that tomorrow is Valentine's Day. So hopefully we can get this on video quick enough, or fast enough, get this on, on the internet or something so that we can save a bunch of men out there tomorrow. <laughs> like myself, uh, since Mike brought that cake, I now know I need to go out and buy a card today. But, uh, you need to. I need two, that's right. And my mother wants a card no, as well. No, 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 you don't. Oh, my daughter. Okay. So um, I want to thank uh, um, the administration and staff of the Villa Park Library. I'm going to read just a little, just, just to make sure I get this right. And uh, we're grateful that Sandra Hill's here. She is the uh, library director, and she's going to make a presentation on services that are available specifically for this group that, my, that, that most of you hopefully are going to be interested in. And I think that's, it's always helpful to hear about things. And sometimes we hear about something we didn't know about. And that helps us all. I usually get something out of these meetings too. Like I said, I'm approaching rapidly the uh, uh, retirement hopefully someday. Um, let me just say this. Uh, I want to thank Al Stash. He's the commissioner of our cable, yeah, of our Villa Park Cable Commission, and and he's here today videotaping our meeting again. And if you haven't seen them, they're on the internet. You can access them. And uh, if you watch the, the the programming that he puts on on the television channel, our local access channel, you can if you watch that, there are some. Um, some clips that he has on there, some, some half hour sessions about activities for seniors, and they're going to start broadcasting some of these clips before, these short clips before or after those. So if you want to catch yourself on, on television, uh, you, know, you can do that. Because you're all, I've, I've seen most of your faces on our clips, I don't know if you've seen them yet. So. Uh, now I hope that doesn't scare you away from coming back. So. All right. Um, I want to thank my chaplains for coming. The police chaplains were here and are here. Uh, um, Stephen Swanson and Susan London. And they may have ducked out for some. There's Susan in the back of the room. And um, I also want to uh, introduce uh, Officer Jeff Rungi to you. Jeff is one of our just one of our seasoned veterans on the police department. He's been on not quite as long as I have, but um, He's, he just recently completed a, an extended tour in the detective division. He's got a lot of experience. He's also a trained uh, ESO, which is an elderly service officer. So if any of you ever need anything specific uh, and I'm not available uh, and you want to call the station, you can also ask for Jeff during the day. But um, most of the time, I'll just have you direct your calls to me. But I'm saying if you had something eminent and I wasn't available, you could reach out and see if Jeff's there. Okay. Um, also, another one of our ESOs is uh, Officer Dennis Campos, and he was recently uh, assigned to the detective division. So his skills and, and training will be going into service there, and that's, that's a good thing as well. Okay, so uh, I, without further ado, I'm just going to, well, well, no, first I want to recognize a few people. Let me, let me just say, say this, I want to thank... Uh, uh, our village manager, Richard Keener, for coming out. He's here today. We've got, 
got our trustees, Bob Taglia and Deb Bullwinkle here as well. And uh, um, as I mentioned, our Senior Concerns Commission, Hosanna Kornecki, Irene Schaefer, and Bob Allen, who's not here, they're all here. They're all, they've all sponsored, they've all been nice enough to, and, and to sponsor our luncheon, which is, which is just wonderful. So we've got cake and lunch afterwards. Um, so it's okay that I'm a little long-winded because it gives us time to get hungry. <laughs> okay. All right. Without further ado, I want to uh, address. I want to uh, um, introduce our director of, of um, library services, Sandra Hill. She's been with the library for 35 years. She's uh, been in, over the over that course of time. She's been in charge of uh, areas like youth services, which is important to all of us because so a lot of us have children or grandchildren, I'll say that, grandchildren, and uh, tech services, automation, administration, and she's here to tell you about uh, many of the wonderful services that are available to you at the library. So, Sandra. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I recognize some of you, and I know a couple years ago I came and, and gave a talk at that time, too, so hi, everybody. Um, my door is always open to anybody who wants to come in and talk to me. If you have concerns, um, suggestions, please come in and talk to me. Um, the library board is going to be starting a new strategic plan this year. We, we need community involvement. So um, if you'd like to see some changes at the library, if you'd like to see improvements, whatever, get involved. We need, this is your library. This is not our library. This is your library, so we need your involvement, okay? Um, I guess what I would start with is, I don't know if you can see these slides, but I'm going to try, is a quote by an author, Isaac Asimov. And what we're finding at the library especially is that the only constant is change, continuing change, inevitable change. That is the dominant factor in society today. No sensible decision can be made any longer without taking into account not only the world as it is, but the world as it will be. So <laughs> that's pretty, you know, when you, when you think about how much the library's changed, the services have changed, um, we still have the constants, but we need to evolve and meet the needs of users. So change is constant. We still have our collections. We still have our new book display. We still have a lot of AV, et cetera. Can anybody tell me how many books they think we have in the, our library? How many? One million? No. <laughs> we, have a, we have a 20, well, basically between the two floors, 22,800 square foot building. So we have, come on, somebody give me a good guess. 200,000. Pretty good. A little bit lower, a little bit lower, a lot lower. <laughs> 150. Well, you're close. It's a. Oh, does <laughs> does he get chalk? Does he get chocolate for that? <laughs> Last year's annual report, we had 113,000 books in the in the building. Okay, 113,000 books. So I guess he gets a piece of chocolate. <laughs> You were the closest. All right. <laughs> I'll leave that there. Here you go. Chocolate. No, he got it. So 113,000 books. Now, every book that we add, we have to take one out. Okay. So every book that we add in our building, because you have finite space. So every book you add, you have to take one out of the collection. Okay, now 113,000, I was just talking to my head of adult services, um, it was about two, three months ago, and I said, that's too much for this building. The shelves are too crowded. People cannot get the book out of the shelf. We need to withdraw about two to 3,000. So ideally, our building will store about 110,000 books. So, we still have AV, we've got TV series. I don't know if you know, uh, we collect TV series now. If they win an Emmy, we're uh, collecting them. So we have Downton Abbey, um, 
24. So if you're interested in TV series, these are all free. You don't have to get Netflix or download streaming things, uh, streaming videos. We have audiobooks. We have MP3 audiobooks. Okay, so they're little, they're called playaways. So if you want to listen to a story, you can listen to a story. We just started collecting video games, so if you have grandkids coming over, you can uh, check out a video game. Or if you want to play Angry Birds, by all means, <laughs> check out a video game. We've made some changes in our youth services department. We we wanted to we wanted to give. Um, the children in our community, the experience of browsing. It's really important for, the, for a child to interact with a book and get that experience. That is part of their early literacy experience. So we purchased some new shelving that has the, the cover of the book face out. And you're an, you're, you as adults like that same experience, so why not give that to, your, to the kids in the community? So we purchased some new shelving. We're trying to add some new, fun furniture. So if you have grandkids, bring them on by. If you're babysitting, bring them on by. Uh, sit down in our early literacy area, and uh, we have puppets and puzzles and games available. Okay. We're going to be purchasing uh, what's called a light table, and that's going to allow kids to interact with blocks and uh, build things. So that's going to be part of our new early literacy area as well. One of the biggest impacts is technology. I mean, you know this, it's, it's huge. Um, keeping up is quite challenging. Um, can anybody guess how many computers we have in the library? Wow. <laughs> we have 77 computers. Okay, 77. Did you see in the foreseeable future technology taking over and it's all going to be this uh, CD or whatever they call them, DVDs or whatever this stuff? We, well, Eliminating it, books is what I'm there not is, completely, but. It's going to take a while. It's going to take a while. And especially when, I, when you see that experience with kids with their picture books, I don't know if that experience is going to be the same. Well, I mean, you know, as the kids get into the teens and that, it's yeah. iPads, think pads, whatever other kind of pads they got. But right. It, it's an, I think it's inevitable, yes, that we'll be changing and we'll be getting different collections, which is what I'm going to get into. But, yeah, we have 77 computers that we're responsible for. We have uh, computer classes in the evenings, Tuesday evenings in the annex. Everybody know that we have a library annex? Some people know. Okay. The library is located at 305 South Ardmore, but we lease 3,000 square feet of property uh, to the south of us uh, where the old drugstore used to be. Remember that drugstore? Um, so we lease that space and we located a department, our tech services department, in that space. And the front part of that area we um, use for programming bigger programs, computer classes. We had our Mardi Gras there on January 27th. So we're leasing space because space is important to us and we want to be able to offer as much as we can to the community. And setting up computer classes was challenging in, in the main building. So we did that. Computer classes Tuesday evenings where we have a schedule of Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel. We just did an email class. We're going to try, try to do a Facebook class. Anybody here on Facebook? Yay! <laughs> it's, one, well, it's a wonderful way to connect with family that you may not normally connect to. I have a cousin who's in Texas. I don't normally communicate with him, but we connected on Facebook. My niece and nephew, they don't call. They Facebook, you know. So, I mean, it's another way to connect with those people that you care about. So, when we do a Facebook class, I hope that one, of you, one two, three, four, five of you will come and, and attend the class, okay? It's pretty cool. I've got an 84-year-old friend on Facebook, so, and she connects with all her family. So, it's cool. Um, 
Another program we are offering is Ancestry. We just started that, if you're interested in genealogy. Um, we just started an Ancestry class. Uh, we have a staff member who's very enthusiastic about that type of genealogy and research. So she's just going gung-ho. We're hoping to start a genealogy club. So if you have interest in that, be sure to look for that class and we'll get you signed up. Um, we just changed our policy on our computer classes. It's no, we used to charge $10 a class and that was for the instructor. Well, all these classes are now being um, provided by staff members. So the staff members are the instructors. Um, but what we decided to do was charge you $10 and if you attend the class, we will refund the $10 back to you. We need to guarantee that you're gonna be there and attending the class. So you'll lose your $10 if you don't, at don't attend, okay? Um, we, t we think it's a good service and we're getting good feedback on it. So we're, and we're looking to add more classes, so let us know if there's something you wanna see us do. Um, this um, March, March 13th, we've talked to Best Buy and we asked them to come to the library and offer a program that you can attend that talks about tablets and e-readers. And it gives you the opportunity to come and look at something before you're purchasing it. So the members of the Geek Squad will be at Phillip Park <laughs> Library on March 13th. And you can sign up between, uh, it's between seven and six and seven p.m. This was an eBay class. Electronics, yes, the world is turning to, to the streaming, to the downloadables, uh, it's coming. Uh, unfortunately, publishers have not figured out how they want to do charging. Um, you've got so many devices out there that the ability to download from the library is not as easy as it should be. We're hoping it will get there. Uh, Villa Park is a member of a, uh, it's a multi, uh, library consortium and it's called my media mall you know it's the top left it says my media mall so they a bunch of libraries got together and say we want to start a collection of ebooks e videos e audiobooks and we'll select from the publishers and this will be our collection so we have over 6,000 titles available right now of ebooks okay um, and if you need help so what you can do is get your device Go and reserve an item from My Media Mall through our website. You can download it to your, vice, to your device and check it out for two weeks, and then it goes away. Okay? Counts as a circulation. Uh, the big titles, the popular titles are hard, you know, you wait in line for those because we can't afford to keep buying multiple copies of that. But um, it's a nice way of not having to spend all your money on um, e-titles. If you have trouble with your device and not being able to download it, the title to your device, come in and book a librarian. <laughs> Our staff members are, we're purchasing all of these um, devices. We're learning how to download it to each individual device and our staff is able to sit with you and get, them, uh, get the titles onto your device if you need it. So. That's the service that we offer, and just come on in and we'll help you out, okay? This coming May, we're gonna be purchasing uh, magazines that um, will go onto your device, your tablets. Um, there's a service called Zinio. Uh, you purchase the platform and then you go and you purchase electronic subscriptions. And you have this particular um, model is you, per, you download the title you want and you, keep, you get to keep it. So if you're interested in, depends on what titles we select, but say you're interested in um, Midwest Gardening and that's a title that's available, you could get the June issue of Mid uh, Midwest Gardening on your device and you have it. So it's a cool service, we're looking forward to it. Uh, we hope it grows as far as the number of titles, but I know there's a couple libraries that are offering that currently, so very nifty. We have available for checkout 
there, you know, it's not just books and AV items, but we have kilowatt meters from uh, ComEd. So if you want to take a look and do a, an audit of your energy use at your, in your home, come on in and check out a kilowatt meter. Okay. If you're not sure what kind of device to, to check out, sorry, it's a blurry picture, but we also have available for checkout Kindles and a Nook. Um, if the, when the pricing on the iPads go down a little bit, we'll probably get some iPads for circulation too. So uh, we're trying to get these devices in people's hands um, so they become familiar with it. All right. One of our biggest challenges is how, how do we remain relevant to the needs of our community? I mean, you, you all need to, if you have concerns or suggestions, we need to hear from you. Um, you, every time you get a complaint, it's not necessarily, it's an opportunity. A complaint is an opportunity to improve. One of the things we re recently got a complaint on is our nonfiction DVDs were in our regular stacks. And somebody wrote it up and they said, well, why are you doing this? It would make sense to move it. Well, we were in the middle of moving things anyway. So we said, well, maybe he's right. <laughs> so we did some looking and some shifting and, you know, and we moved all the nonfiction DVDs into our multi multimedia area. So um, we want to hear from you, whether it's, uh, it's not a complaint, it's an opportunity, okay? As far as our programming, we're trying to, we're try if you look at our audience, you know, we're talking from babies. We have programs for babies in our library, uh, babies. Um, from the, the day they're born, the parent can come in and, and listen to songs, song and finger plays, etc., up to 90, 95, whatever, however old we, you know, we, uh, person that comes in. So if you take a look at that, we're trying to span that, those generations. And we're also trying to f figure out what people need in their lives, what, uh, what's missing, what would they like to see happen. Um, we had a suggestion from uh, a patron about, well, you should offer a program on canning and preserving. We found somebody who could do that. That's, that program's in our resource. Um, and we have 20 some people signed up for it. So um, we have resume reviews because we, we have seen a number of, well, you know, the economy's bad. So we have a lot of people who don't have jobs we're helping individuals at our computer stations, um, whether it's filling out unemplo unemployment forms, um, whether it's fill helping out with a resume, filling an online job application. We're sitting down with people one-on-one -on -one and helping them out. So that's going on. Um, we also offer programming for resume review, interviewing, how to keep your car healthy was Monday night. Uh, we've got a program on slow, the slow food revolution coming up. Uh, gardening and environment. Let's see. We do entertainment. Everybody, has anybody here been to one of our concerts? No? Mary has. <laughs> um, we had jo um, Eric Noden out. We had um, Mike Knopf and the Dixieland Jazz Cats out for the Mardi Gras, which was really very cool. So we have good concerts, and they're all free. This is free. Uh, we have cooking programs. <laughs> we have handicraft programs. We have jewelry making. We have ceramics. Um, we're trying, you know, there's a lot of the shops that used to be open in this area. A lot of the Willowbrook used to have extension courses or courses that you could go and learn how to do these things. That has kind of fallen by the wayside. So, you know, where, where do people go for a creative outlet? Um, that's important in people's lives. So we're trying to offer programming um, at the library to meet those needs. We have science and nature programs. We have a nice astronomy kind of club going on on Friday nights once a month. Um, he, he is from um, Harper College. De Dean McLachek does uh, talks about astronomy 
on Friday nights once, twice, once a month, once every two months. Um, we use our local resources. Um, um, Pioneer Feed, Bill from Pioneer Feed gave a, a great program on uh, rain barrels. So um, whenever we can find somebody locally who can do a presentation, we do that as well. We do voter registration. Um, are all of you registered to vote? Okay, that's good. <laughs> Don't need to go there. Um, we provide notary service, okay, if you need something notarized. Uh, you can come into the library. I would just caution that you need to phone first because we only have about five or six staff members who are notaries. And we do not do real estate tra transactions. Um, Cook County added a fingerprinting to their uh, requirements, so we said we're not doing real estate anymore. So we do do notary. We just pr uh, started a fax service to meet the needs of the, those people trying to get jobs. And unemployment. We learned recently that um, if you're applying for unemployment, some of those, they still use mail, snail mail, they, um, or faxing. They don't email a lot of, a lot of the documents. So um, we got a fax into the copier machine we have, and um, we're offering a fax service. If you ever become homebound, say you're laid up, you broke a, a, le a bone in your leg, when you get laid up, you can phone the library and we will provide homebound service. Uh, our reader's advisory will go and select books for you and check them out on your card and deliver them to you. And you can have the books up for four weeks, okay? If you're laid up for an extended period of time, the service will continue. We'll just keep going. We have several homebound um, patrons who, they are, it's wonderful to the, Candy Smith, who's our, in charge of Reader's Advisory, she provides the service, and it's a, the, maybe the only social contact that that senior has. So um, it's a good service. <coughs> you were asking how, where, what's happening. Library services, this was uh, from a, a recent, what's called a Pew Report, and it's a research group. And they, they asked about 2,800 people about libraries. And the availability of free computers and internet access now rivals book lending and reference expertise as a vital service of libraries. In a national survey of Americans 16 and older, 80% of Americans say borrowing books is very important. 80% say reference librarians are very important. And now 77% percent say free access to computers and the internet is a very important service. So, you know, we need to make that shift, that change to accommodate what we're seeing happening in our society. Um, Willowbrook High School recently donated five laptop computers to the library, so we'll have those available for checkout in the library um, and use our Wi-Fi connection for anybody who wishes to uh, sit and browse the internet. And while we're still doing all the traditional services, the books, adding the books, adding the AV, and then buying the e-books, all that, we also have to add this element on how we connect with people who may not come into the library or who may want to use the library at their convenience, at their, you know, when they're online. So we have to start looking at a 24-7 service, okay? So you, the way we, we've approached this right now is our website. Um, if you go to our website, we're trying to put together links that may be of benefit to you as a patron. We have local information. We have Villa Park fact and figures on there, local information in the library, clubs and organizations. That link is being updated as we speak. We have the directory of local, state, and federal government officials available. And then we have an obituary index, which is useful with genealogy. And that is updated all the time. So here's our guide to government officials. We give you all the contact information. We just got the tax forms in. 
<laughs> We've been wait waiting for tax forms, so the tax forms, well, the majority have come in, so if you're looking for uh, the booklets, etc., most of those have come in. But we also provide you a link on um, how to find these things online and give you some useful resources. I bring you back to the kids zone just because you may have grandkids with you and you need to sit them down sometimes while you're cooking dinner or whatever. You can plant them in front of the kids zone page at the, from the library and they can explore there. We have uh, links that are available that they can um, explore. Some online resources that are worth mentioning, um, and this one's interesting, speaking of dad. Um, when my dad, a couple years ago, um, got sick and we couldn't figure out what was going on with him, um, and found out that he, he came down with diabetes, on sudden onslaught of diabetes, well, and he actually almost died. He had uh, diabetic ketoacidosis and had to be put in the hospital. Well, you know, when you've, you've got a family member who goes through all that, you're researching. And yeah, true, you could research off of Google and just Google everything, or, and you could Wikipedia. But if you want a trusted resource, go to your library. We purchase databases that have tr good information, valid information. So if, you know, when I was researching, this is what I looked up and I went, oh my gosh, Dad. <laughs> We almost lost him, but he's doing well, so it's all good. Um, consumer report, reports, uh, we just added this resource two to three months ago. Um, everybody may be used to the print, you know, the magazine you used to get. This online version is wonderful. It really is, because you can go in and you can say, I want a new refrigerator and they will give you some models and you can click, click, click a couple little buttons and you can compare what you're looking at. So it's, it helps you out in making those selections. So if you're looking for a new car, an appliance, etc. And I mentioned Ancestry. This one is only available in the library. We couldn't purchase it for the entire community. It was cost prohibitive and they want you to buy individual accounts. But if you're in the library and want to do research, Ancestry is available. Anybody use Google Maps? You know, <laughs> if you want to, if you want to connect, it was just, and this is just kind of a side note, you know, um, I bring it back to my dad. He's not a computer person. But I think I may have gotten him interested in an iPad. We were sitting down the other day, and he was watching me on the iPad I have, and I said, Dad, let's look up where we used to live. Okay? So we found Thomas Street in Chicago, and we were going through, and I said, okay, this is what it looks from the satellite. And look, Dad, they've got a street view and there's a house on the corner that, my, that we used to live in. So, so it's pretty cool. So he's getting over that fear of the computer and fear of the I, iPad, and I think we may be purchasing him one. So if any of you have that kind of trepidation, come into the library and we'll help you with the computer, the Kindle devices, whatever. It's, it can be real fun. And there's things out there that it's just amazing. Okay, so we got the computer classes, we got the technology, we got the books, we got the programs, we got... Now, how do we keep connected with those individuals who may not be using the library? We're talking like the 20s and 30s. Um, where should we establish our presence with them? So the library has a Facebook page. And we'd love if you got onto Facebook and liked us. <laughs> Uh, and become connected with us. We post our programs, we post new books, what new books we're getting in, what new services we're doing. So this is just one means that we can connect with our residents. So someone in the library has to maintain our Facebook page. We're also on Pinterest, okay? Pinterest is just like a bulletin board, except it's on a computer. 
I know, it's amazing. But guess what? You know that new book display I first showed you at the beginning of my presentation here? It had all the new books on display. We're doing the same thing electronically. So Pinterest, um, February 1 display. All these books here are on display. So if you're at home and you say, oh, it's a snowy day, it's 10 degrees, I don't want to go to the library and look at the new books that they have on display, and you're on the internet, you can go look at our Pinterest account, see what's on display, you can select the title, it puts you into our catalog, and you can place your hold, just like that. Ah, yes. And everyone can see that that's just the screen, and I don't know if you can see it because it's not, you know, it's a little dark, but right here is a row of books. This is another row of books, so this is going to scroll down. Yep. And on all the screens she's been showing you, they're scrolling, so these screens provide a lot more information than, than what you see. Picture you're seeing. Right. So, um, so we're, we're putting, trying to get our collections out there. So if you're at home, and we just want to make it convenient for you. You know, you don't have to come into the library and look at the new books. You can place your reserves from home now. We thought it was pretty cool. And we we're hoping that this social media will stay around for a while because um, it was like, can we do that? Well, let's try it. And it, and it worked. All right, mm -hmm. so I had to show you some of my Pinterest postings. I have a... As a director, I feel I have to keep current on some of these technologies. So what I do when I'm at home, I go and I play with these things. And then if you don't play with some of this, you don't know what's possible. So that's how we got into the whole Pinterest. Somebody played with it, and we said, let's go for it. Um, so you know, I have a library land bulletin board there. I'm not going to show you that one. That's boring. I got my recipes. <laughs> Okay, so you got your book, you got your books at home, your recipe books. Well, if you go online, you can pin and have a collection of recipes using this Pinterest. So it's pretty cool. I found some nice recipes that way. And I just wanted to, sh it is so hard to keep up with all the new technologies and all the new software that's out there. And it's like, what can you use? What is a practical application in our environment? What can we just go with and use. And right now we're using Hoot, what's called Hootsuite, and that just enables you to, to send posts to Facebook and Twitter in a planned uh, manner. And that's little bird is Twitter. We've got our technologies here, iPads, Kindles. We're YouTubing occasionally, not like Al. <laughs> <laughs> we do uh, LinkedIn. LinkedIn is an interesting one because you can use that for your resume. We uh, take pictures all the time. We have a Flickr account. Google Documents is coming. Tumblr, we just got a, a um, news article that Tumblr is actually um, starting to beat out Facebook with um, the younger age groups. So it's like, OK, we need staff to go there, figure out if Tumblr is something relevant for our use as well. You have to go where your users are. Okay, and this is a picture that's in my office. Okay, it's by Mahatma Gandhi. Um, be the change you wish to see in the world. It's one of those things um, I've talked to staff about. We have to be relevant to our community. We have to be willing to change. We have to be much more mobile and outgoing and visible and it's one of those, I keep saying and, it's, it's something we need to strive for and that we need to be. So um, that concludes my program. There's a lot of changes going on. Uh, I think we're up for it. We're making changes all the time. Um, and we hope that you become involved in our new strategic plan. Uh, we need to hear from all of you what you'd like to see happen at your library. And there Thank you go. Thank you. Well, what I'd like to do next is kind of open this up to questions. So uh, if anybody has a question they'd like to ask Sandra, and I'm putting her on the spot here a little okay. bit, but I think this will help 
now that you got all this new information, do you have anything that will be relevant to help yeah. yourselves? Now that the medical building is moving out, yeah. are there any plans to expand? Um, well, I, I will tell you this, that we're working with um, St. A's, we're hoping that St. Alexander's and us can ha reach an agreement, we're hoping. We do need to, um, there's some real big building issues with the library right now, and I guess I would say that we have an elevator modernization to do, we have a, a roof to look at, we need to look out into the future and say, okay, the condensers uh, for our air conditioning, 10 to 15 years, if we change those condensers, we need to upgrade the air handlers. The air handlers won't fit in the current penthouse, so we'll have to expand the penthouse. Um, the windows are still needing replacing. We, we've put off doing the carpeting because why, you know, you don't work on carpeting when you have other issues, um, like plumbing. Plumbing is an issue right now, too. <laughs> so there's some big things going on. Um, but we're trying to, to work on perhaps a enlarging the space and then attack that all at once or try to because there's, you know, you, you reach a, a cost effect in a effectiveness by doing it in one project rather than doing, you know, several projects. So um, Villa Medical Arts is moving out. Uh, the building owner asked us if we're interested in leasing more space there. We may go in and take a look at that and see. but. Um, the cost is too high. We can't afford to purchase that building. So, but we, you've got big building issues. One of the things I'm going to take away here today is that I could bring my grandchildren to the yes. library for a great event. Yes. How much shushing do I have to do? Wait, that's what we've had to change. We've, that has changed. What okay. we now do, if we have people who come into the library and who complain about the noise level, we actually hand out earplugs. <laughs> no, you know, we, we tried it. We tell people to keep it down. You've got to observe our code of conduct, et cetera. But the library is a very busy place. It's really bustling. We've got families coming in. We've got, I, we've got the building is just hopping. So shushing people especially when you're when you've got teenagers who come in and are trying to work on a project and you don't have study rooms for them so they're working on a project i'm not going to shush teenagers coming into the library we'll tell them oh, you got to quiet down a little bit but you know if we get those complaints we are in a tight space we're an active building busy building um you know just observe the code of conduct and if it gets really loud we got some earplugs that we can give you <laughs> <laughs> no, no, just the general <laughs> machine. <laughs> yeah, just the plugs. So, yeah. Are you looking at a referendum and what the economy way it is? Would it pass? No. Uh, the library board is not looking to do a referendum soon. And we would be working with our village on any type of uh, that type of question. I mean, the, the library board and management, we agree that streets have to come first. Um, so what we're hope, but that said, I mean, if we could get line up property, if the cards were right, you know, there are grants that we can apply for that may pay 30 some percent of any type of building project. So we may at that point say to the community, well, would you be willing to pay 60% of a project? But that's down the road. There's a lot of things to put in place first. So um, no, the board is not mentioning the R word at all. Question. I saw something on TV about this Andrew Carnegie. He left some money for a library trust. Right. Are you still available? To, to I'd have. Something? I'd have to look into it. I know that he his money built libraries. He put in a trust, and I understand it's growing because there's so much in there. You know. I have to look at that. I've always talked that we should talk to Oprah too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, send Oprah Winfrey a letter and say, hey, we need some. Uh, money infused into our libraries. I mean, there are a lot of libraries in the same type of situation. Mm -hmm. But I, I, will, I will look into that. Did you, get, did you guys see that? Now I get to do my humor. The Oprah Winfrey Villa Park Library. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my brother lives in Sheboygan, and he went to the University of Wisconsin at Sheboygan, and they had a library situation where they, they needed a new library, and they 
they gave the naming rights to Acuity Insurance up there. So it's the library's name then, and they got a big donation for, for that. So, you know, it's not outside the realm of possibility. So. Yes, um, we have an ongoing sale in the library lo lobby, and that those dollars are going to the library foundation. We have a Villa Park Library Fund um, administered by the DuPage Community Foundation. We accept donations, please. If you have donations, bring them on in. Um, if we don't use them in the collections, then we do put them in the sale. We also um, filter those out first and send them to an organization called Better World Books, and they will go and try to sell those online for us. If they cannot sell them online, then the books are donated to literacy um, agencies. So the books, and if they don't need them, then they'll be recycled. So we're trying to deal responsibly with any of our donations. How do some of these programs you uh, spoke about, are they listed on the, uh, on the internet? Yes. We have them there? <laughs> we, we, we approach it several means. We have um, the library website. We have a calendar there. We have a copy of the newsletter available in PDF on the website. And then we have the paper copy. Um, and we were excited that we were able to, um, the printer in town, help me out, printer in town, Progra Prographics, no. Anyway, the printer in town. Um, gave us the same cost for the all color than he did for the two color. So <laughs> it's looking like a very nice publication and um, goes to every household in Oakbrook Terrace and Villa Park. And all the programs are listed here. I think why a lot of people don't know participate is because they don't know about it if you have a certain program. That's what's so hard is that, you know, this goes to every household, but then people say they don't. They don't know about it, so it's like if you can find the secret way <laughs> that we can communicate the the fact that all these programs and, and the rec department programs. I mean, this community does a lot, and how do you get the word out to people that you know? Well, a lot of it is available now. Getting back to the technology on the internet, where you can see what kind of resources are available. Yeah, you have a computer first. Right. Right. And that's what I was just going to say. And if you don't have a computer. But, but, but we didn't have those back when I was a, a child, and I, I got to tell you, the only way I knew what was in the library was to go to the library. Come on in. And even when I got there, and as a kid, you know, tell me how many of you didn't have this experience, when you got there, there was the old card system. Right. And you still couldn't find what was in the library, so I would be raising my hand and going, Sandra, Sandra, I've got this term paper due. And right. So, and That's what we're there they for. They still have a wonderful staff at our library. Right. I'm telling you, yeah. every time I walk in that door, and if you haven't gone in there, and I know exactly what she's saying about the books for sale, when you first walk in the door, you walk past them, you walk in, the very first thing you see is about three smiling faces right. behind a desk. Right. And, and they don't go like this, can I help you? But they are there, and they always smile at you, and all you have to do is go up and say, I'm looking for a book. And they'll, oh, what? And I, I'll tell you, bam. And, and, and sometimes, like she said, it's fun to go look for the book yourself. So if you got the time and you want to go look for the book, go find the book. But if you're in a time crunch, you ask them, and within five seconds, they've got the book for you. Now, for me, it's a, it's a lot longer, or any of us that, that are trying to find a book, sometimes it might take us a little bit longer than five seconds, but they, the staff is very knowledgeable about what's, right. in, what's in the library. That's, yeah, that's what we do. We want to connect you with whatever informational needs you have, whether it's a book, um, a bit DVD, something online. That's what we're there for. So don't throw these away when you get it at home. <laughs> really go through them. Don't recycle these. <laughs> really go through them and take a look at the programs. I think, I think we've done a really good job with our programs, especially for adults in the past few years. So that's been a, real, a, a goal for us. And you were, you were, all your, your present, presentation, I, I 
fucking with someone, I'm not gonna remember all this. Just keep all the yeah. dates and all that. Right. Can I steal one of your things here and, oh, and just you. talk about it first? Go for it. Here? Go oh, for this it. This is awesome. I'm gonna tell you this, folks. It looks like a plain piece of paper, but it's not. This is a bookmark. And I'm gonna show you the front here in a second. What I find amusing about this is this is exactly what we want to give our young people. <laughs> when they ask us for this item, we want to hand them this one. And they're gonna say, what am I gonna do with that? It doesn't work. And you're gonna say, put it in a book and read it. It's a remote. It's a picture of a remote on a bookmark, and I love that. I love that. I love that idea. Dad, could you pass the remote? Here. There it is. What am I going to do with that? Take it in the other room, take one of the books off the shelf, and go read it. Because there's nothing better than reading as far as learning. Right. And uh, I know that you know I'm an older generation person, and, and I still go to the store and purchase books. I like to go over to the bookstores and things like that over to the library and get a book and still read a good book. Okay. And I, I'm a history guy, so I like to read about history, but everybody has their thing, whether it be gardening, whether, and the library is such an awesome resource for that. And you don't have to go out and spend what it costs to buy a book in the bookstore that way. Save your money. You know, one, of my, one of my problems is uh, a lot of years ago, I, I knew a girl that could take out two books and read that in one night. I read one chapter one night, I'm doing good. Mm -hmm. So how, how do you pick up on your reading ability? Well, it's, pr it's practice. practice, practice right? Yeah. <laughs> and if uh, we have a three-week loan period, and you can renew a book for three more weeks. So, I mean, you got to, and, you know, and if you bring it back and nobody wants it, we'll give it to you again. So, um, yeah, I mean, it, you know, just practice, practice, practice. And I, I think I was going somewhere else. Oh, well, I think I lost it. That's okay. But you know, one thing I want to say about that, Sandra, that will help you with that, is I agree with you the, 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 on, on reading. Sometimes you pick up a book and then you set it down for a few days because you're busy. you got other things yeah. to do. And what I might suggest is take a look when you go to the library now at these books that they've got for sale. They're not for sale for like retail price at a bookstore. It's, you know, 50 it's, cents. It's, a, it's a much lower cost, and they're good books. And how many of us have read every, how many of us have seen a book or even a movie or something in the store and we, or on TV and we were going to watch it four years ago, and now we see it's on videotape somewhere for $5. We buy it and we go, wow, that was a great movie, uh, or that was a great book. And that's what I'm trying to say. So I'm sure there's really good books there that you might be interested in and taking yeah. a look at. Yeah. So uh, anytime, come on in, um, come see me. If you have suggestions, let me know. I mean, another question. Another question? Yes. You know what, on the Pinterest, yes. where it gives you the collection of the new books, mm -hmm. are the new books available for um, Kimmel or? Some of those titles um, are available through my media mall, but you may, that's a different reserve list. Okay, so that's going to be a, a possibly a longer. Yeah, okay. yeah. Um, we 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 added to the um, we purchased like an agreement with the group, and so the the reserve list will only be Villa Park people that you'll have to you know get in line for. Otherwise, you'd be faced with the mu multiple users from other libraries. So some of those popular titles will be the reserves will be limited to Villa Park people. All right, come in and ask. And we'll get you. We'll get you hooked up. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna cut this off a little bit, Sandra, because right. you're. I know you. I, I keep going. Do, I'm gonna tell you something here, folks. The chili's here. There you go. Okay. So I'm gonna ask everybody to do me one favor. Just don't stampede for the chili.